The legend says that there was this goat herder in Ethiopia called Kaldi, who noticed that his goats tended to be more active when they consumed the red berries of a bush. And because he probably never heard that curiosity killed the cat, he decided to try the berries himself and noticed that, first, they tasted like and second, he also felt energized. He later brought the berries to his local monastery, where the monks, in typical religious fashion, decided that it was a fruit of the devil, and threw the berries to the fire. There, the coffee beans roasted and the delicious aroma attracted their attention. They pulled them from the fire and decided, you know what would be a good idea? To put them in water and drink them. Because curiosity, again, is greater than the unknown. But in any case, this resulted, according to the legend, in the first cup of coffee ever produced. Good morning. Just going to get straight into it. Why have we shown a video about the bizarre origins of coffee? Might seem insignificant, but what I've learned is that we actually owe quite a lot to the curiosity of that Ethiopian goat herder who investigated that berry that made his goats go a bit loopy. Let's fast forward 800 years now, because that's what we can do, and to a moment in London in the 1600s. Coffee was about to be introduced for the first time, and why is that important? Well, because before it was introduced, do you know what people used to drink? Does anyone know? Beer, you all know. You've done your homework. That's fantastic. Beer was believed to be the safest, most beneficial fluid that you could drink in the 1600s in Britain, which means that people were wandering around drunk, foggy-headed, and hungover the whole time. So there was this Greek entrepreneur, Pasqua Rosé. He brings coffee from Turkey and he begins serving it in a churchyard near the Royal Exchange, which was a thriving center for merchants and entrepreneurs uh, at the time who would come and take a coffee break and discuss their ideas. This became a very popular activity, uh, which grew and eventually became the first coffee house. Should be a picture of a plaque up there now, uh, where you can still visit it. I mean, that doesn't really show where it is, does it? But there's a nice plaque. And so coffee was a game changer because it was safe to drink, it perked you up, it brought clarity and focus, and for the first time, people were actually able to think clearly. They weren't drunk. I mean, you know what you feel like after your morning coffee or tea? Don't you? Think about that this morning. And it also, it didn't taste nice at all, by the way. Um, there was many quotes for people saying it was tasted like mud or poo or whatever. <laughs> but the important thing that came from it was the coffee house culture. And that's what started to emerge at this point. So what was the culture? How many of you, how many of you have been to a, a cafe or coffee shop recently? Yeah? Think about the experience for a second, right? Now, could you imagine walking in sitting next to a stranger and asking them for the latest news and sitting and debating that for hours. No, I don't think so. <laughs> now, could you imagine bringing a giant book that you've just been reading all week, thumping it down next to someone's iced latte and asking their opinion on, on it before delivering your own speech to the, the whole room about it? No, you'd get thrown out, wouldn't you? I did have a slide, actually, just to show you what, um, what happens when you go into uh, Starbucks nowadays. That tends to be the site that we, uh, we're used to seeing. But actually, what I just said about uh, the, what you can do in the, what you wouldn't do, sorry, when, you, when you're going into these places, um, was actually 300 years ago, perfectly normal behavior in a coffee house. It was actually actively encouraged. So you wouldn't be considered an absolute nutter if you just approached a stranger and started sharing ideas. It was open to rich, poor, the educated, uneducated, and everyone in between. And in some cases, you weren't allowed in unless you could give a satisfactory answer to the question, what news have you? Now these spaces were free of control 
oppression, or limitation, and allowed the open-minded to think and interact freely and for themselves. They were seen of as places of national, uh, national, they were seen as places of rational thought uh, and intelligent debate. They were free from the structures of society, religion, politics, and people could bring anything to the table. And some literally did. One scientist famously brought a dolphin and proceeded to dissect it in front of the uh, people in there to help explain one of his theories. Now, depending on which coffee house you'd visit, you'd come across different kinds of people uh, who were known in finance, science, philosophy, government, arts, literature, religion, to the point where coffee houses eventually became known as penny universities. Because you'd pay a penny for entry, you'd get your cup of coffee, and then you'd listen to people debating the nature of gravity or God or whatever, and leave having learned something. And so coffee houses became very popular. And within 40 years, there were over 2,000 in London. This is in the 1600s still. And if you're interested, we had them here in York too, quite early on. Uh, the first is said to have been, in all places, in Coffee Yard. Uh, and by the end of the, the century, we had as, as many as 60 in York, which is quite a lot for a small place. Um, but their popularity started to get a few people concerned. Uh, the thought of people freely gathering together to think about and discuss potentially radical ideas was a bit of a worry for some. So King Charles II, he tried to ban them altogether, but they were so popular with his own associates that he ended up having to endorse them. Other cultures had similar problems uh, with those in power looking to suppress the coffee culture. Now, there's a very recent example of this happening, actually, in Egypt during the, I don't know if you remember, the uprising in 2011 that was going on. Uh, people were actually using coffee stalls in the streets of Cairo to share ideas that would bring change. Uh, but it got to a point where they were afraid to speak freely because spies were sent in to infiltrate and listen and disrupt any discourse that was going on. Uh, so we can kind of see parallels of that today in our interactions, particularly online, actually, uh, where we seem to have lost the ability for nuance and rational discussion. And so we see suppression and people getting cancelled. But this is, this is all happening in the digital world, where it sometimes feels like you're just interacting with a username and a picture. And so it's easy to kind of dismiss people and start a slagging match. And so I think there ought to be a real appetite to bring back the idea of what coffee houses originally stood for. Uh, not what they've become nowadays with your Starbucks and everyone staring into their phone and quietly sitting there while they're shouting at people on Twitter somewhere on the other side of the world. There's a definite difference, by the way, between uh, the term coffee house and coffee shop. Now, coffee shops are just about selling coffee and giving you Wi-Fi so you can doom scroll until your bus arrives. Uh, and if you're Dutch, actually, co uh, coffee shops offer something else that perhaps uh, brings a different kind of enlightenment. But coffee houses were a catalyst of change. Penny universities were where the new ideas were exchanged with diverse groups of people from all walks of life, with different views getting together and figuring it out. Does any of that sound familiar at all? Now, could it be that the coffee houses of the 1700s were doing ecclesia better than the church ever did? I'll leave you with that thought and hand over to Joel, who's going to enlighten us further. Thank you, Kev. That was absolutely awesome. Also, I'd just like to say a massive welcome to our guest this morning. It's really lovely to have you with us. Um, okay, so moving on to the next part. So Thomas of Aquinas to John Locke to Isaac Newton represent hundreds of years of wrestling with the philosophical ideas that would ultimately liberate man from the medieval shackles of the Dark Ages and transform his mystical mind to one of reason. That which was occurring in the 17th century coffee houses was a build-up towards a glorious reveal. 
the age of enlightenment. For the first time in history, an authentic pursuit of and respect of reason swept the entire culture. What had been kept largely underground, driven by a small group of innovators and pioneers, pioneers now swept the Western world, setting the framework for the Industrial Revolution. Confidence in man's mind and his ability to produce and create replaced his dependency on the religious institutions which had dominated societies throughout the Middle Ages. Metaphysics, which simply means the study of reality and existence, had a fundamental change in emphasis. From deity to the secular, where we live by the realm of nature and that which exists, not that which we mystically and emotionally construct. One could argue this is the truest expression of God. Like a return to Eden, we walk and talk with God, not as separate entities, but as co-creators, seeing the barrenness of the earth and creating solutions to fix it. Rather than seeing the world as a realm manipulated by a deity, who only communicated its desires through selected writers and interpreters, we see the world as clay to be molded or a canvas whereby a fine piece of art can be painted. The Enlightenment shone a light on man's default beliefs and mechanisms and brought about not only the increase in our knowledge, but also the shift towards moral improvement. If we are able to create solutions to the problems we face in the physical world, we are also able to change the moral code by which we live our lives and thus form an ethical philosophy that transforms the way we interact with those around us. Original sin versus original blessing. The entire paradigm was challenged. No matter what doubts were had, a new vision of man as inherently good not inherently evil, elevated our view of humanity as being vessels with the potential for greatness and virtue. You don't change the world by believing man is flawed. You change the world by reclaiming self-esteem. So why care about the Enlightenment? Well, it was the birth of the modern world as we know it and established the idea that progress was possible and the keys to the kingdom, so to speak, are in our hands. The advancements in technology and science are all as a result of this point in history. Sadly, we witnessed a wave of destruction seen in things such as fascism, communism, global warfare, and various other collectivist ideals which were a product of anti-enlightenment ideas. These ideas by their very nature threaten the progress made and in order to fully pursue the good ideas, we must seek to understand and wrestle with the bad ideas as uncomfortable as they may be. Q embarked on a journey 20 years ago, whereby we entered a kind of dark night of the soul. In order to challenge the common narrative of religion, we entered a period of what felt like emptiness, confusion, helplessness, and even stagnation. Little did we know, this ice-breaking ship was paving the way for a new enlightenment, drenched in purpose, freedom, and meaning. Instead of carrying the weight of shame, fear, and condemnation, we cultivated and nurtured pride, confidence, and love. And so, as the sun rises on a new era, we find ourselves sat together in the modern day coffee house. A group of creators, innovators, and thinkers ready to ignite the flames of a new enlightenment. As we approach the shores of a new world with endless opportunities, I will leave you with a quote from my favorite speech mixed with a few of my own thoughts. The last of my words will be addressed to those heroes who might still be hidden in this world, those who feel that they have been held prisoner. In the name of the values that keep you alive, do not let your vision of man be distorted by the ugly, the cowardly, or the mindless. Do not lose your vision of his potential to explore unlimited lands. 
Do not let your fire go out in the hopeless swamps of the approximate, the not quite, the not yet, the not at all. Do not let the hero in your soul perish in lonely frustration for the life you deserved but haven't yet reached. To win requires a total separation from your previous paradigm, that your life is to fulfill the will of God and the primary virtue is sacrifice. Instead, ye are gods and the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It is here and it is now. Fight for the value of your person. Fight for self-esteem and fight for pride. Fight for all that God designed you to be, a sovereign creator within your time and space. Fight with the radiant certainty of knowing that your life holds value and its expression is a unique, rare, and joyous stain on Earth's tapestry. The world you desired can be won. It exists. It is real. It is possible. It is yours. Thank you very much. So, we would like to introduce you to the New Look Q. Welcome to the Forum at Q. Your modern day coffee house. So, we've been in many discussions over the last few months about where we are as a house and where we want to be. And at a meeting we had with Rob Hornby, we were all chatting and he said, you do know you're not a church, don't you? Which we all laughed. And I think, if we're all honest, we haven't been church in the traditional sense for a long time now. And we have been much more like the ecclesia. And the word church has actually become a bit of an obstacle and a barrier for many people who would welcome and enjoy what we offer here at Q. And for others, it can be a bit misleading that they're coming thinking they're coming to a church and it's not quite what they thought it is. And how many of you say to people, oh, we're going to church this weekend, but it's not like, it's not like that. It's, it's sort of like this. And you kind of fumble your way through it, don't you, explaining it. Um, and I think we've been making our way to this point for some time. So as a leadership, we've decided that now it's time for change. And the journey of the Rock Church and Q has been, it's been massive, really. Even in the lifespan that I've been here, I came here in 1998 to Rock City, and I saw the, the Saturday night concerts we used to do, the evangelism, the in-deeps we'd have. There was the unconventional by design when we were, you know, we, we understood that we were different and we had something a bit unconventional. There was the noble house, the dark night of the soul, which Joel talked about, which took us to a place which actually found our enlightenment. And then the deconstruction that came from that, leading us to start our quest, our quest for authenticity and a faith that makes more sense. But then came the liminal space, the transition period, which Jenny carried with such grace and strength of heart. <laughs> Sorry. And we honor her, and we honor the legacy that Anthony and Chris have given us. The journey they took us on, and the new land they brought us to. I said I was gonna be factual and not emotive, but that's not happening at all, is it? And we are without question, standing on the shoulders of giants. But in that time, we have morphed into something other than church, much more like the ecclesia that Anth so beautifully explained to us all those years ago. And the journey has led us to now and has progressed and evolved into something new and something needed, especially in the world we live in now where cancel culture poses a very real threat to our freedom and authenticity. And as Kev was saying, with social media becoming a breeding ground for contempt and negativity and outpouring of anger as well. Um, you know, people have got a fear of speaking more freely because you're worried about what attack you're going to come under. Having an opposing view, you kind of keep it to yourself. I was listening to a podcast only this week with Dawn French saying that. She said, I feel like I can't comment on certain things or, or, or promote certain stuff with fear of being 
kind of cancelled or trolled or and it's become really negative space which it, it's sad really because there's so much that people want to say and we need to be able to have healthy debate and have other, other opinions we can't just say my way is the right way so the time for transition is now over and we are coming out of the liminal space because we are ready for a new direction so on the 21st of july we will be closing our doors to q church we will no longer be calling ourselves a church and no longer be pushing a primary Christian agenda. And that doesn't mean that if you believe in God or if you're a Christian, you can't be here. That's not what we're saying. What we're saying is, is that we're going to get rid of that word church because it's just become a barrier and an obstacle. And we want to welcome everyone who wants to come here, atheists, Buddhists, whoever, Everyone's welcome, all works of life, which we felt like that for a while anyway. So this isn't new information, but we're just labeling it and calling it what it is now. So yeah, as of the 21st of July, we will no longer be Q Church. And on Sunday, October the 6th, we'll be opening our doors to the forum at Q. So what is the forum at Q? Well, a forum in its definition is a meeting place where ideas and views can be exchanged. A modern day version of the Enlightenment Coffee House, which Kevin and Joel have beautifully just explained to you. The forum at Q will be exactly that. A meeting place where ideas and views can be exchanged. A place for all walks of life to meet and discuss topics surrounding philosophy, psychology, theology, religion, sociology, a think tank, it will be a safe space for conversations, debate, sharing of views, and in turn, creating a community, a buzzing community of people. But we will be continuing our quest for curiosity by widening the framework of our understanding and creating a space for ideas to thrive and for conscious minds to expand. Our aim is to make what can be learnt at the forum be a helpful guide into opening thought processes in order to aid better coping strategies for everyday life, like we do now. We talk about things that help us and the big stuff that happens to us. And by opening the discussions, which we do, this enables and empowers people to help each other and share differing or supporting views that can help expand thinking and our widen our worldview. It's much easier to have a conversation with somebody about their views than it is do it online. Face-to-face -face conversation is really important. And even after COVID, it's been dying out. We need to bring that back. We need to bring back the community. We need to bring back the conversations, the acknowledgements, the, the nodding and the hmm and the huh. Because you don't do that through message, do you? Messaging, WhatsApp, it's all very f formulated, isn't it? You think about, you can edit it. Whereas in a conversation, you can't. It throws more freely. And you have the opportunity to disagree or agree or come together in a much more unified way. So the ethos, I think we've got some slides here. The ethos of the forum is this. Welcome to the forum at Q, your modern day coffee house. The essence of our existence is to promote reason, freedom of thought, and the importance of discourse. Whether it be philosophy, theology, psychology or sociology, we invite you to grab a coffee and pull up a chair. The forum exists as a safe, but also thriving and transformative environment whereby ideas can be birthed, exchanged and wrestled with. We invite skepticism, promote religious tolerance and celebrate human reasoning as powerful tools to enlighten hearts and transform minds. Progress and change aren't a one-time event. It is a beating heart that must be nurtured. We want to be a significant voice in the ever unfolding legacy of our world. Q was founded on the challenging of the status quo of religion. Just like the coffee houses of the 17th century, it has been held in contempt by its critics as the breeding ground of heresy. Despite this, just like an icebreaker, it stayed true to its nature, breaking the ice of conformity and shaping a new generation 
of thinkers and pioneers. So, when, where, how? The Sundays that they exist at the moment have evolved from the platform-based events into a more interactive vibe, with topics presented and then discussed. The format will continue like this, and there will still be people, persons, presenting and leading topics of discussion, but there will be no longer an overriding emphasis on talking about traditional Bible content, or as I said, with a Christian agenda. We want to talk about all sorts of things, which we do anyway. We're literally just labeling who we are and moving into that confidently. We'll still, we will keep the name Q York, and Q York will be the organization, so the umbrella, the continued legacy, and the facility. But the Sunday morning format and any other content based events will now be the forum at Q. So if anyone asks you where you go on a Sunday, you say, I go to the forum at Q. <laughs> and it will, because it will act as a forum for discussion and ideas from all areas, all areas of life and belief. We'll still be running as a charity, which Beth's going to explain next, and we will remain funded on donations and the Airbnbs, and we're going to keep uh, hiring the main hall for events. We're still planning on running our own events. We've got an incredible music team. We've got a lot of talent here. We want to still do those things. And we're going to be having community lectures as well. So Rob brought his AI event recently. And we're going to be bringing some more of those because we want to help bring in new faces as well and aid with expanding the voices heard at the forum. So they might be midweek. We might have some... You know, I know that Rob's already going to bring another part two to his AI event. And I know Joel's in talks with Menfulness about collaborating with them and doing a talk about learn helplessness. We want to widen what we're doing. We want to bring people in and not keep our doors, like, so restricted. We want people to feel that they can come and be a part of it and expand what we're doing. And the doors will open at 9 a.m. into Pillars where a coffee shop style setting, or coffee house, I'm not sure, you can buy it and talk, <laughs> will, be, will be in place. We're gonna have a barista coffee machine. Yeah, yeah gonna get nice coffee. Uh, we'll be serving up quality coffee, along with other morning drinks and breakfast food that will be available to purchase. So we're basically gonna have this as a one massive coffee house where you can come in on a morning, grab a coffee, pull up a chair, have a conversation with someone, and then at half past 10, we will come into here and open our doors to the forum where we will all sit and talk about what news have you, talk about the topics that are going on, the things that we want to discuss. And then Q Kids. Q Kids is still going to be a big part of this. We're going to be hopefully having quite a decent facility for them. And we've already spoken to the team about the changes because um, we really want to encourage that next generation of thinkers. You know, uh, the children have got wonderful minds that are sponges and we want to help encourage them. And they will also be talking about what news have you and also be having their own forum in Q Kids. And there's going to be some practical changes around here. There's going to be modifications to pillars, the kitchen in the back hall. We're gonna make this feel a lot more inviting. We want to have some festive lighting, make it feel like a real cool space. And it's somewhere you can invite people to freely, like you can come and go. If, if one week you think, oh, I don't fancy that, you, you don't have to come, like there, there's not, we'd love you to obviously, but we don't want you to feel this pressure. It's going to be a very much more open vessel. But obviously donations, and I want to take this opportunity to thank you all for supporting us thus far. Because the fact is, it's been difficult financially. And we couldn't exist without the generous donations of our supporters. And you really have gone the distance here. And we really value that you have stayed and supported us. Especially this past six months with me, Joel, Kev, and Beth, and Danny. We really value that you've stuck around and you've listened and you've fed back and that it's been great and we want to thank you for that. And really thank you as well for the support you give us financially as well. And we hope that you will join us in the forum. We hope that what we're presenting to you today sounds exciting and something you might want to be a part of and that you'll see its potential 
and we'd love you to come with us and to support us on our quest. We understand that this may not be for all, but be encouraged that we have momentum, we have a direction, and we're really excited to open our doors to the forum. Okay. Well, that's all really exciting, and it's something that's going to be a little bit new and a little bit different. Um, but I also want to encourage you that there are some things that are staying the same for a little while. Um, and so Claire mentioned that Q York is still going to be our umbrella organization. Um, so Q York will continue to exist. Um, and we, as Q York, we have some charitable aims that we have for years met in various different ways. And that is going to continue. We still have charitable aims that we want to carry on meeting. Um, so with the hopeful expansion of Q through the forum, um, we hope that we can expand our offer charitably as well as we go along. Um, for years, we have done some incredible charity offerings for the community. And although that's dwindled down a little bit more recently, as our numbers have, hopefully as they increase, so will our charitable offerings. So I just want to encourage you that there is, we're not going to suddenly launch in and be like, we need loads of help from September with all of these charitable offerings that we're going to be offering from, or from October. Um, but we, I want to remind you of the things that we do still do at the moment that are current and that we still want you to be part of. So we still have our walk and talk that Mick and Sarah and Jan organize and it's incredible. Um, it, it's brilliant. At like As an offer, it would help reduce social, social isolation. It gives people a chance to get out and be um, be in the fresh air, it helps with mental health. It, there's all sorts of things that the walking and talking is a, is a great offer for. And I hope that if you haven't been to one of those already, that you will be able to going forwards. Um, Q Gardens. Now, we haven't done much with Q Gardens recently. I think I can look around the room. There's a few people who are involved in Q Gardens. And we had a number of, of our congregation who needed some help with their garden. And a group of people got involved and they really helped and really made a difference. Not only in our garden here at Q. Thank you, Debbie. You did a lot of that. We appreciate that. But also, big, big round of applause for Debbie. Um, but also, we, uh, the Kew Gardens guys go in and did Barbara's garden. They've done Jim and Mavis's garden. There's, there's been all sorts of, I think Steve's neighbour, he went there and did loads of stuff with the, her garden. It's a really lovely offering that we can help people. And if you are somebody in our community who needs some help with their garden, let me know. Because we do have a little team who try to get out there and do some stuff when they can. If you are an avid gardener and are not part of the Kew Gardens WhatsApp, come and find me and I'll put you on it. Because you should be. Um, our Reflections Night that Kelly has been running um, is another great charitable offering that we have, and we're going to continue that in October. They meet the last Wednesday of the month, I think, and it has been in Pillars, and it's just a lovely time to sit and reflect on some of the stuff perhaps has been discussed on a Sunday, but also anything you've got going on, if you need a time to be quiet and to sit and be calm, the Reflections Night is another thing that we have had on offer. And then our over... 65s has been another thing that we've done. Um, I think we're, we're moving it more into the idea of it being a retirement club because it was over 55s and 55 feels quite young, like, doesn't it? For those of you who are like nearing 55, 55 feels quite young. But we, we're sort of thinking maybe edging it more towards the retirement club and beyond. And we'd love to keep doing something for that, that group. And um, we know that John Band, who was, a, who was a really faithful member of our community, he did some phenomenal job with the, the over 55s. Um, and years ago, some of you guys used to pack shoe boxes and you did all sorts of stuff. And it'd be lovely if that group could join together again and start doing some more charitable stuff, particularly as John has left a charity in his name over in Kenya. It'd be lovely to be able to support some of that as well. Um, then, oh, I've just closed my thing. Um, Claire mentioned about the cafe opening and doing breakfast. One of the things we'd love to be able to do is a pay it forward breakfast, have a breakfast on us. So there will be an opportunity when you come in and to buy your coffee and your breakfast to be able to buy the same for somebody else and leave that behind as a ticket so that nobody feels that they can't come and join in as part of the coffee house and have breakfast and, and discussions that they feel they can come here and be fed. Um, and finally, just discretionable, discretion, discretionary, I'm reading the wrong thing. Discretionary charitable acts. Um, we have always, as an organization, we have always offered charity to those in need. If people turned up here and needed feeding, we've take, mixed taken them to the chippy. If, if they've come and they've needed gas or electric, Maggie's gone and sorted that out for them. You know, we've always done things like that, and that is not going to end. We are still a charity. We still want to help where it is 
suitable and possible. We want to do that. And so um, that will not end. Um, and we'd love going forward for there to be more things that we, that we offer in that respect. Um, but as we grow, we will see where that takes us. And the other thing is that the social stuff that we have been offering over the years, that will also continue. We love getting together. We love spending time together. So our beach days and our bonfires, um, our garden parties, the things that just bring us all together as a chance to be friends and be community and care for each other and have fun together. Because, you know, if you laugh together, like you can do most things together, can't you? So I think... Um, yeah, those kind of things. We want them to continue and to carry on. So as the overarching umbrella, Q York will continue to exist. It will continue to offer community. It will continue to offer charity. And hopefully, the forum at Q will feed into that, and it will feed into the Q forum. A little bit of backwards and forwards. It all exists under the same umbrella and continues together. And I think that's it. Over to Danny. Kev mentioned earlier that upon entering the coffee houses, of the 17th century in London, you would be greeted with, does anyone know the phrase already? No, <laughs> what news have you? You'd be asked, what news have you? Now, uh, you may not know that many newspapers that we now have actually originated out of the news that people brought. People decided they were then gonna write down the news that people had. And then that became papers that then became what we now have today. Now, I don't believe that what news have you is just what you've been up to this week or what's been happening on the news. I think each of us are on a journey of growth and progress. And I think part of the forum is each of us bringing the things that are new for us. What's been going on in your life, in your world, in your inner world, in that spiritual world? What things are you learning? What are you reading about? There will be some people who will get up and speak, but I want to learn what each of you are learning about. Now, that requires something. It requires that each of us take responsibility for our own growth and our own progress. It requires that each of us actually are learning how to think. We've had a phrase that's been a big part of our culture for years, which is, we are not here to learn what to think, but to learn how to think, to learn to think. So I would just like to invite each of us to continue that journey so that as we come each week, when someone says, they might not say, what news have you? But I want us to have that culture of what news have you? So that you come with an idea of saying, yeah, I've got something to share that's been going on in my life recently. Um, now, I want to start that ongoing conversation today because I think I'm very aware that each of us might have questions that might be coming to mind as we're hearing the vision for what is next. And we might also have ideas and things that are coming to mind. We believe in synchronicity here, which is when things just somehow seem to align um, in time. And I think there might be some things that each of you have had in mind that you think, I want to share that. There are some sheets on the table with questions and ideas on and some pens. So um, after I've finished speaking and after we finish with a song today, I want you to just take that opportunity to just any questions that you've got coming to mind, get them down. We want to hear them so that actually we can process that and get back to you. Um, and also any ideas. You think, oh, I think this might be a great part of what the forum might be. Pop it down. It might be something that we haven't thought of yet. Okay. Oh, another thing that is on your tables, which you may or may not have noticed, is a card with a QR code on it. Um, that is a way of just, uh, if you haven't already, signing up to email updates for the forum at Q. So if you just get your phone out whenever you'd like to, take a, with your camera, you kind of scan the QR code. I'm telling people who maybe don't know what QR codes are. And it will give you a link online and you can pop your email in and then you can sign up to updates for the forum at Q because we're going to have lots of different online things going on from social media and an updated website. So we'd like you to be part of that as well. Okay. So, we are excited about the next chapter. Um, and I really believe that the essence of the forum is going gonna, is gonna to be that essence of the coffee houses of old, where innovation and transformation and world-changing creative ideas kind of emerge out of us discussing and exchanging our ideas. So, as you, as you digest what you've heard today, I want us to continue our personal journeys of growth and be aware of what's going on in our world so that we each have something to say when someone says, what news have you? So with this in mind, we are going to finish 
with a bit of a treat this morning. I'd like to invite Joel and Leah up, um, and we're going to finish with a song that is a celebration of going beyond what we've mastered and embracing a new world. Thanks. Thanks.